And we are back live on OKC CBS Sports Radio, Big Boy Morning Edition. And Mo, this is pretty big, man. This is pretty big right here. Oh yeah. This hey man, this this is one of those moments in radio. Roll your tape, man. Roll your tape. No doubt about it, man. I am very, very honored to welcome on the show for the very first time. First time we've had a champion on the show. A real deal champion, like hands and fists on your face. Please welcome to the show, folks. WBC heavyweight champion, Deontay Wilder, bronze bomber. How we doing, man? Thank you so much for coming on. Man, thank you guys for having me. And I'm doing I'm doing good. You know, just getting from an epic fight like that, one of the best fights in, 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 a, in a long time. You can definitely say for the, for the heavyweight division. See, this is what happens when you put the best in there with the best. You get great fights like this. You get epic fights and you get um you get fights that you you will remember for years and years and then people are going to take away from that for years to years to come especially if you are first time boxing uh, uh, uh you was first time attending boxing oh my god you 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 got spoiled you've been spoiled already and um it's an epic fight you know i'm just on the verge of of uh looking to be uh, the best in the world, like I say I am. There will be one champion, one face, one name, and he go by the name of Deontay Wilder. No doubt about it, Deontay. You took me right to it, man, talking about those fringe boxing fans. Um, for those fans out there who had just saw you for the first time or boxing fans who they just kind of watch a fight every now and then, how would you describe your style? Your style is pretty unorthodox but also pretty loose and pretty fun also. Describe your style to new boxing fans who don't know about yeah, you? Most definitely, most definitely. I'm definitely an orthodox fighter. You know, um, my style is very unique. Um, I'm awkward. I'm, I'm super awkward, you know, and, and it's just my style. And sometimes you can say my name, my last name fix, fix my style as well, wild as well, too. You know, I put it all together. But at the end of the day, style is a style. Styles make fights. You know, different fighters have different styles. You know, you have some styles for you for you fans that like more seasoned, more polished fighters. You know, you have fighters for that as well too that can that can put the combinations together and and, and can box. You know, mine's is a more interesting, a more entertaining style. You know, and 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 I I, I carry it with me well. You know, I train so hard to be the best and. I knock guys out. I'm the most dangerous guy in the heavyweight division. I'm the baddest man on the planet. You know, nobody hits like me, and I got God-given power. And it was crazy. It was amazing. It was amazing to see what I could do all while still. I was sick in that fight. I was only 76% really. Uh, You know, I came with a cold and stuff, but I didn't want to make no excuses. I don't, Deontay Wilder don't make excuses, you know. He do what he got to do. I ran my mouth for so long up to that point. Now it was the moment. It was the time to prove myself. And I think I passed with flying colors. I think you did as well. Uh, you walked through fire and you knocked him out. You fought Luis Ortiz, of course. Why was this fight so important to you? You know, he failed that drug test back in October. And many other fighters have dodged him. But you, you stepped up and really, really wanted this fight. Yes, most definitely. You know, um, I, I, I took this fight, um, for one, that what I've been saying all along, you know, I've been running my mouth a lot. You know, I've been saying I am the best. I know I'm the best. You know, I'm the, I'm the hardest hitting champion in the division. I'm the best champion in the division. No one's like me. You know, I've been saying that for years and I wanted to prove it. I wanted to prove it to the best that, that the division has to offer and Lewis Ortiz, was the best. Luis Ortiz is the most technical, most polished sound fighter. And keep in mind, he comes from this Cuban background school. So, and he's a southpaw in the whole division. No one wanted to t- take this guy, give this guy a chance. No one wanted to fight him. Even champions today that has titles now did not want to fight this guy. They dodged this guy. They ducked him. You know, that's why he was called the boogeyman of the division. But I seen the opportunity, and I said, I want to capitalize on it. I want this guy. I said, I'm the best, and this is the perfect time to prove to the world that I'm the best. And then when he got popped with the steroids things, uh, you know, with the PEDs um, that he was taking, 
I still want to give him an opportunity because I said I still want to see if I'm the best, whether he's on something or not. I want to see if he's the best. And then, you know, looking from one father to another father, see his daughter has a, a disorder as well as my my daughter has a disorder. So I was looking at like he needs money. I know how hard it is out here for us to be able to support our children, especially when they especially when they got a disorder. It takes even more money and care and love, and I wanted to be able to bless him with money as well, too. So I continue with the second part because I didn't have to fight Archie's. I could have left. It was the perfect excuse for me to leave and, and duck him and dodge him like every other fighter did, but I gave the people my word. I promised myself that I'm the best and I would prove it, and I did it just that night. So, you know, in that ring, not only were there two warriors, but there was also two fathers fighting for their baby girl. And we both won that that night, in that night. Talking to the champion, Deontay, the bronze bomber, Wilder. Wow. Hey, uh, Deontay, take me inside, not the, the round that you knocked him out in, but take me inside round number nine. What changed in the fight? What did you see? And what were you able to take advantage of that eventually set up what you went to work on on the 10th round? Well, in round number nine, you know, I started to – Hit my mojo back, but you know, round number seven, I had to, I had to overcome adversity. I had to, I had to, I had to, I had to dig deep. I had to show people that you know it's more than just being able to knock guys out. I also have to be a survivor. I also have to believe in myself. I also had to hype myself up because he, he, you know, he came with he came with some great punches in round seven. That almost got me out of there. But round nine, I was getting my mojo back. I was, you know, I was feeling good. And it was time. You know, I started seeing openings that was being created because Ortiz had gassed out. He, he, he started was falling. My jab started was coming in. And we started to line, I was starting to line things up. You know, it took a while to adjust. And it took me to go go through the fire and go through adversity to find it to adjust. Once I, once I see that he couldn't hurt me and he realized that he couldn't hurt me either and I was stronger than him, you know, it was downhill for him then. And then that's when I started setting up, setting up shots for him. And I knew it was soon would be the end. When I started testing a guy easy, I knew it would soon be the end. The thing about me that fighters look at, you know, they look at my style, they look at my awkwardness, and and, and you know, with my body frame being slimmer than most heavyweights, you know, they think they have an advantage. They think that they can come in and just they're going to be stronger and bully me around until you step in that ring. And it's a whole different thing, and, and and when when you see you when you step in there with a champion like myself, you definitely gonna have to fight. You gotta bring it to to me, because I am a champion for one, and I'm not trying to let these belts go for two. And I will unify. So that means I will do what I say. I, I what I'm gonna do. I re, I do believe in what I say I'm gonna do, and I must accomplish my task, complete the mission, and get the job done. No doubt about it. Heavyweight title holder. Champion WBC Deontay Wilder live with the big boys. Uh, you you took us right there. Um, you said you that you're looking for Joshua to come up next. You guaranteed a knockout once again. Uh, that mouth is running off once again. That's Deontay Wilder style. And we were talking about this the other day on our show with our boxing insiders. I feel like you're in a, a funny position because there's not that many contenders. There's not that many heavyweight guys out there that, that folks are really knowing about and are really clamoring to watch. So is there a possibility where we could see possibly a rematch with Ortiz or after Joshua, uh, Prevekin maybe? I mean, that puts you in a funny position. How do, we, how do we navigate the rest of your career with a limited number of heavyweights that deserve that shot for the title belt? Well, there, there are definitely um, more heavyweights than we think there is. You know, it, it just... It just haven't been introduced to the world yet, or the world haven't been introduced to them. I would say, you know, uh, there are many guys that's coming up. We got a lot of hot prospects and contenders that's coming up. You may not hear about them right now. You may not hear about them too, too much. Uh, you may not hear about them in the next year, but they're coming. You know, once upon a time there was a Deontay Wilder. Once upon a time you didn't hear about a Lewis Ortiz or. Anthony Jaza or Tyson Fury or a, a, a Joseph Parker. You didn't hear about us at one once upon a time until 
we came up on the scene. Our name came out. So we got a lot of hot prospects, especially in America as well, too. You know, this is a big world, and boxing is a worldwide sport. Right. So, you know, it's, 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 it's too big to, to not assume that there won't be the next Deontay Wilder, you know, come aboard. Uh, anybody, you know, it's just it's so unpredictable to tell. Um, right now, you know, we, we're definitely moving forward with Anthony Joshua. And once I unify the division, you know, I want to clean out the division. You know, I would love to get a rematch yeah. with Lewis Ortiz once I unify, and he's still there. He's not going to move down too far, you know, from me. He's put up a great fight. I think he's still going to be he's still going to be in the top ten ranking. And it's going to be up to Lewis Ortiz. If you really want that rematch, it's going to be up to him to be able to to come back, pick himself up, and and, and, and come back strong. You know, all that's up to him. It was a great fight, and I would love to do it again with him. My mission is to unify right now, and uh, that's what we're going to do. So right now we're waiting on Josh with them um, team. I know they got a fight coming up on March the 31st, and if he prevails and win that fight, then it's no more it's no more ducking, it's no more dodging me, it's no more running. We don't want to hear no more excuses. America, we're ready. We're ready to see who's the best. I know I'm the best. Are they up for the test? I've said it many a times. I'm the baddest man on the planet <laughs> and I want somebody to come and shut me up and I want him to do so. You know, I will come to England no matter what. I'll come to England for the first fight. As long as he returned the favor in the second fight, all the negotiations to come here to America. We can do one in England, then come to my backyard and do one in America. So we'll be in both backyards and we can have us a big barbecue, man. And at the end, we can love <laughs> on each other and talk about it. But until then, let's make this fight happen. Mo Money, Mo Money, the champ, Deontay Wilder, heavyweight champ right here on Big Boy Morning Edition. Uh, you talked about uh, Joshua, and he has a big fight with uh, Joseph Parker coming up. Is that fight with Joshua, with you and him, is that the fight that's – Going to unify everything. You're going to have all the belts if you win that fight with Joshua. If, if Joshua prevails against Parker, then you will be looking at the biggest, most exciting, most entertaining, most anticipated heavyweight title fight in his in in, in history to come. And you know, in 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 a long time, really, you know, there haven't been a man to unify the division since 2014, and um, that was Lennox Lewis. So it's been it's been it's been years upon years, um, you know, decades a decade really um, since uh, we have had an undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. So if Joshua prevailed against Parker, that's what we will see. You got two giants in the ring. You got two guys at the top of top of the division. You know, in their primes and, and ready to go, undefeated as well. So if you prevail against him, that's even more adds to it and. It's going to be the biggest fight in world history. It's going to be, oh, my God, you know, it's going to be amazing to be able to unify and to have one champion, one face, one name, and he go by the name of Deontay Wilder. And we're looking forward to seeing that moment happen. Deontay, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to join us today. When that fight gets on the ticket and gets on the card and gets on the schedule, we want to talk to you about the training that you're going to need to do to get ready for that fight, and we look forward to hearing from you at that time. Until then, sir, congratulations once again. The, the champion, the champ, right here on the radio, ladies and gentlemen, Deontay Wildman, the bronze bomber right here. Thank you. Uh, my man, thank you guys so much, and, and love and peace and blessings to you guys. Bronze squad! <laughs> no doubt.